Good afternoon. Welcome to Pike Creek Farm. Today, this afternoon, I am making stuffed cabbage. My mom's recipe for stuffed cabbage. And look at this cabbage I got at the Mennonite store yesterday. $2.25 for this massive cabbage. I'm going to make, use um, a roaster pan to make mine in. I'm going to bake it in this and then I will take some and put it in a uh, crock pot to take to church tomorrow because it is our pastor. I'm going to take it to church tomorrow because it's our pastor appreciation potluck and I had put a poll up on my community channel for what I should take and I had four different choices and they were pretty neck and neck for a while. Mom's chicken divine and mom's stuffed cabbage came down to the final day and stuffed cabbage was the winner. So I talked to mom last night just to verify how she does it because I do things my own way too and I wanted to find out like where she got the recipe and because she's made it as long as I can remember. I mean I was just a little girl and I'm no youngster, but she found it in a recipe book in a magazine, actually, she said, and she's made it the same way my entire life. I wasn't sure if it had been a family recipe or not, but it probably was in the early 60s. She found the recipe, and she used to get Red Book and Ladies Home Journal and Good Housekeeping, all those magazines, so it was probably from one of those. And it is a great recipe. We all have the family all enjoys it. So, and it's pretty simple. It's tedious, but it's a simple recipe. I'm going to use three pounds of ground beef today because I'm making it for the potluck. You wouldn't need to make that much. I usually use two pounds. One isn't enough because I always want some leftovers. So three pounds today. So I'm going to put the ground beef, open them up and put them in the bowl. And the meat mixture is just rice, ground beef. I have made it with venison before too and it's very good. Two, uh, three eggs. Mom has always said you use, you're making meatloaf, meatballs or anything like this. It's one egg per pound of meat. So today I will have three eggs to help bind it together. Okay, I am going to get rid of these wrappers and wash my hands. I used my Tupperware rice cooker and made a bunch of rice, more than what we will need. You, wanna, you don't want it to be half and half you want it to be a little more meat than rice so that it binds together well. So we have the ground beef in the bowl. I'm going to add the three eggs. The seasoning is very simple for this. It's salt, pepper, some onion powder. She doesn't put onion in the meat mixture. I, when I've made it, I have added dehydrated onions or some chopped up onions, but that wasn't what the original recipe called for. Sprinkle of salt, um, probably a teaspoon and a half. I got three pounds of meat, so I want enough for that amount of meat. Pepper, probably like half a teaspoon. I could not find my onion powder, so I'm just gonna add some dehydrated onions.
I'm going to start with this amount of rice. And I will probably put my, mix it up with my hands. That was the best way to make sure it's all mixed together. Some people I know use a potato masher or Mom has also put I'm gonna take that out instant rice instead of instead I'm gonna wash my hands. I did just wash them, but I'm gonna wash them again. And I'm gonna take my ring off. And now I'm going to mix it very center of the ground beef was still frozen a little so a little so I'm going to mix that up you could put gloves on to do this too I do not normally Okay, and it's kind of sloppy. It isn't a real firm mixture with the egg in it and everything. But look, it will ball up. And it smells really good. So I am going to wash my hands. Definitely need it now. The next thing to do is to get a stock pot on your oven, on your stove. Get a pot of water on your stove heating up. And then you peel off the outside of your cabbage, the outside leaves, and any bad spots or anything you see that's discolored. And then you take a knife and next to the core, where the leaves attach, you go down. Then you put this into your pot of water. This is a big head of cabbage, but it does fit down in there. <laughs> Now we need to get the items for the sauce. And it's tomatoes. You can use diced, whole, crushed. I'm using my home canned tomatoes. We need some thinly sliced onion and lemon juice. onion skin is like stuck to me. If I didn't have enough tomatoes, I have added tomato sauce to it. Sometimes I will add a sprinkle of brown sugar if it seems like it's very acidic. Now I got a big fork out and I use that for the head of cabbage. And this head of cabbage is definitely gonna be a challenge. But I stab it in there. And let's see if it's loosened up at all. There's one off, another off, and we still have the cuts in there. 
you have to keep adding cuts as more veins are exposed. So I'm going to put this back in the pot. Now in the bottom of your pan, you use the outside leaves. I don't put the thick vein. I tear them up just to cover the bottom. Open up one of the pints and put about half of it on the bottom here. And this has to cook for like three to four hours till everything gets really soft and tender and the meat's done. I'm going to put my oven on right now at 350 going to put some onion on the bottom see if we can get some more leaves off yeah these are gonna find which one is the most furthest outside and sometimes they get where they're folded and connected. These are exceptionally big leaves. <laughs> okay, there's one. Two. This big, thick vein does not taste good it gets tough so you can either cut a V and cut it out or take a paring knife and cut it level to the rest of the cabbage I am trying to figure out I might need to I am actually going to cut this in half since this is so big to make a little more reasonable sized stuffed cabbage. So now you take some of the meat mixture and you kind of wrap it up like a burrito. And I am going to cut that tough part out because of the way I'm making this. Fold in the sides. And roll it up. And that's not as pretty as they usually are. Since this cabbage is so big, I'm going to flip it over to the other side to soften the leaves more. Trim that down level, flip it over. handful of the meat mixture. I guess it's a pretty big handful. Of me. So this one's softer. So fold in the sides, fold up, and roll, and roll. And there we go. I'm going to Trim off the excess on that one. There we go. 
into the roaster. When you have one layer of the cabbage rolls in the bottom of the pan you're using, add more tomatoes. Open a second pint, add a little bit more from this one. onions rinse my hands <laughs> cap full like so like a teaspoon of lemon juice We're going to make more to go on the second layer. Get the meats all gone. The cabbage is down to this size, which is about the size I like to start off with, actually. <laughs> it was a little more challenging. <laughs> I'm going to add the rest of this pint of tomatoes. few more onions and just a second I'll be right back another teaspoon of lemon juice and I am gonna put just a sprinkle of brown sugar on top it just gives a little more depth of flavor and takes away any acidity. I'm gonna put the lid on this now. As you can see, I put the lid on. And it will go in the oven for about three hours. It takes a while to for this all to cook. And I think the longer it cooks, kind of the better it tastes. Like, I'm cooking this tonight I'm going to take it tomorrow and I think it tastes better the next day. It's funny how some things are that way. In we go. So I'll bring you back when it's done and show you what it looks like. And how mom typically served it was with mashed potatoes or boiled potatoes. We used to have boiled potatoes or sometimes a baked. She liked baked a lot and usually with peas on the side so i don't tend to add that many side dishes because it has the rice it has the meat it has the cabbage sometimes i do add the potatoes but that's what's for dinner for tomorrow at our potluck so come back and i'll show you more here they are finished making some instant potatoes to go with it it's late for dinner we're gonna have a couple tonight and the rest I'll be taking to church tomorrow I did add a small can of tomato sauce because it wasn't just making the sauce the way I wanted it's um, and I didn't want to add more whole tomatoes or the crushed tomatoes to it so we'll serve it up and show you what it looks like and we are ready to serve it. I didn't put forgot to put some of the sauce. 
on top of the potatoes. Flushed in this lighting, but here we go. Oh, the meat fell off. We got meat, we got potatoes, some of the sauce. It's good. Simple but good. And I have made this low carb before by using cauliflower rice instead of the regular rice. So that's always an option. You can use brown rice. Thank you everyone for stopping in. If you want to see more recipes from my family and baking and canning videos, subscribe to my channel. And if you like this video, push the like button. It really helps. Thank you so much for everyone stopping in and see you next time at Pike Creek Farm.